Hi everyone. Gosh, I haven't done a voiceover video in so long that I have completely forgotten how to do them. And I don't even understand how I did them before where I was able to talk for about 10 minutes straight. And I, this is, I think, my fourth attempt to try and do a voiceover. And I just can't seem to, uh, perhaps maybe my mind is somewhere else and it's not on me being able to show this video to you all. But I tried, I actually, for this video, I moved my my artist table, I don't know what to call it, my kitchen island, it's not really an island because I use it, my art table, there we go, my art table that's on wheels. I have all of my, uh, my paints on there and my palette um, where I mix all my colors, my little tiny bucket of water that I use, and I moved it to the left side of the of the left side of where I am so that just because of the way, way the window is and I'm left-handed having the camera on my left side was obscuring the view and so this having the camera on the right side of the screen allowed the view to be unobstructed and so I hope that this gives you a better visual of my process when I'm creating these little um, snippets of color and if you look right now, that tool that I'm using is just a palette knife. It's nothing fancy. It's an old palette knife that I use and I scrape into the wet paint and it just adds a little bit of line into my work without having to actually draw onto it. And the concept of these little paintings that I'm doing here came from a theater production that I was in called Sunday in the Park with George. It's about George Seurat, who was the not really the pointless painter, but he really developed the idea um, or talked about the idea of how two colors laid beside each other will actually create the third color, uh, which is a really cool little concept. And so I thought if George and I got together and we had a drink or a beer, what would our paintings look like? And so because I started out with geometrical shapes years ago, back in 2008, I I decided that I would do a little bit more of a loose feel on those geometrical shapes, but also using, you know, colors next to each other to create a new color. Sorry about that. I had to, I had a tickle in my throat that was kind of really making me want to cough and sneeze all at the same time. So I put you on mute there for just a second because I don't think I can bear with having to go through another uh, attempt at this voiceover. I want to get this done. I want to get this video out to you guys this morning. And so these videos, if you, they actually, these pieces don't take me very long to do. However, in saying that, I did try to get four done and I destroyed two. So um, it doesn't mean that each time I go and attempt to make these pieces that they are actually successful. Um, uh, I was really glad that I was able to get two out. And I did remember from all the feedback that you guys give me under the comment sections, and thank you so much for that. I remember to take a short video at the end of this video that shows the actual two completed pieces. And I'm hoping to have them up for sale on my site today around noon. So if you're interested in a 10 by 10 by me, you can go head over to my website um, and you can find the link. It'll be in the description. Okay, so these pieces are created tiny, tiny little, you know, elements of color, little pops of color. And I take my time. I love to layer my color. And so even though I'm using really a gray, a green and a pink and a that's really all I'm using. I'm using different tones of those colors where I'm adding a little bit more white or I'm adding a little bit more black or probably more that gray. If you can see the gray in here, oh, look at that. It just supersized. Um, that's the gray that I'm mixing into my green and my pink so that all of those colors have a consistent theme throughout all of them. That's the important part. Of, of how when you're doing a work like this where the colors all work together that's how you do it is you you make sure that you add a little dab of one consistent color into all of the other colors that you're using at one point I will do I promise you all I will do a video where it shows my palette and I'm talking about mixing my colors 
I just have to wait until I get into my new studio so that I have a spot set up constantly for only YouTube process videos. My art table becomes a disaster and for me to have to clean it up every week to do a process video is just not going to happen. I know my strengths, that's not one of them. And so I'm just flipping here these back and forth. I do find the camera on my right that I know it's there. It almost feels like there's somebody looking over my shoulder. And so I have a hard time working on the piece on the right. And so I found that if I just keep switching them so that I have the one piece in front of me, it, I found it a little bit easier, even though sometimes when I get into the process of painting, I forget to switch them. So that's the reason why I'm switching them. And I also just want to say that my process videos are only for, um, what's the word I'm looking for? entertainment purposes only just because I'm showing a process video that does not mean that I am um, giving permission for you to copy my style and to sell it um, I'm saying that because just recently on Instagram I had a company that was in uh, Russia that took without my permission one of my images on Instagram and uploaded it to their website and they were selling prints of of that work well attempting to sell prints of that work and not only my artwork this was a whole I'm sure the whole Instagram profile was of stolen artists work um, and so thankfully Instagram has a great program that I found about copyright rules and um, I, as soon as I messaged them and sent them the information from that site they took it down I think probably within four minutes which was really impressive I have to say so all of my videos that I put up on YouTube are for entertainment purposes only so that you can have an understanding of the layering process that I do uh, you can certainly take that layering process and add it to your work and make it your own unique style um, that's a completely different thing but there's no copying of any other artist's work um, for your own personal gain but if you wanted to attempt these pieces and hang them up on your own wall, I would love that. I think it would be really cool. And the other, other thing that you should always do if you're um, practicing an artist style and, and wanting to post it onto Instagram or whatever platform you're using, you have to tag the artist to show that this isn't your work and that um, you got this idea and concept from another artist. So pay your respects to anybody um, any other artist that you're uh, learning from is is always give a shout out to them. I know a couple of you have asked me to do a video on copyright, but I, I don't know if I would really want to delve into that too much. I mean, it technically is you don't copy another artist's style uh, or work to sell. That's really what it is. There's no it's a pretty simple I mean I know there's a lot more that goes into it but we own the rights of any work that we create I'm getting I'm getting sucked into my own video which is why I stopped talking there it's really hard for me I get why you guys like watching process videos um, I, it doesn't matter to me what time they're in, if they're speed time or not, or just real time. These are real time. I did cut out some of the in-between parts where I'm trying to mix new colors on my palette. I, sometimes I can be there for a little bit too long. Um, or I walk away and I take a break and then I come back. I don't, I, I cut all of that out for, so you guys don't have to suffer through that. But I, I do get the allure of watching someone else paint. And so if you don't want to hear my voice, by all means, just put me on mute and then you can just watch the video yourself. Um, and so I, I just tiny, tiny little pops of color. And the reason or how I know where to go, because this is a question I get asked a lot, is how do I know where to add more color or, or to take away um, from the composition by using white, like how I carve into it, is I really do that by my eyes where is my eye traveling is it getting stuck in certain spots this is why i think people you know when you're at a museum and you see a person just studying a painting and they can be there sometimes for half an hour just standing in front of a a, a piece and 
absorbing all of the information that's coming to you is that's the important part that's about studying a piece what's working what's not working where is your eye going what do you like about the painting what's working i probably said that already so in midst of me making these paintings my eye is constantly moving around the composition where is my eye going what what does it like what doesn't it like is the value of certain areas drawing me in or is the surface too flat are there not enough differences in value that will allow my eye to move around the canvas so that is a question i'm constantly asking myself in midst of doing this so okay so here we are i gotta i gotta focus so this is these are the end results of the work that I just did. And I, as you know, my mark making, I leave that off camera, that is for me. Um, but these are the exact same pieces of where you saw. And I just went in and added my details to bring out that composition. So really simple, that's all it is. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all next week.